Hello, I'm Purna Murthy and I'm a yoga teacher and I'm going to talk to you about dealing with back pain. What can yoga help you with if it comes to managing your back pain? Well, first of all, you can start by using some common sense. I meet a lot of people in the spring who see a little bit of sunshine, they go out into the garden, they get down, digging in the ground and they spend all day hunched in a forward bend and then they come back in and then they wonder why the next day they can't move their backs. I meet a lot of ladies who go out shopping, everything comes into one bag in one hand and then they wonder why their spine is misaligned and they end up with back problems. We sit in the most horrendous chairs here in the West. We sit on soft settees that curve our back forwards, pushes the chin into the chest and we wonder why we end up with back problems. So sit sensibly, sit with your back straight, sit with your feet hopefully on the floor, put something under your feet if you need to, and just start to look after your back without coming into exercise. You can start helping your back in lots of little ways like that. But I'm gonna talk about now about yoga postures that can also help with your back. One of the best ways of working with the back, very simple, is to come into a position like this. And you lift your feet off the floor and you place the hands on the knees and all you do is very gently take the knees forwards. Breathe in as you do that and breathe out, draw the knees back. Make sure the back of your neck is nice and long and you're not tilting your head back. If necessary, you can always put something underneath your head as support. Very simple movement, but it's like ironing out your lower back. It just eases into the lower back. And when you just lie like this with your feet on the floor, then again, it just eases into the lowest part of the back where we often suffer from tension and pain. Another movement you can do from this position, which is quite easy, and you can do this with your feet on the floor, just moving your knees very gently down towards the floor on each side. You don't have to take them completely to the floor unless your body is happy for you to do that, in which case they can come all the way down. But just a little bit of movement on either side again is just working those muscles, easing into stiffness and tension and pain. If you're okay with it, you can do the same thing, lifting your feet off the floor. Just rocking across the back and if you're able to do, taking the knees all the way down. But only if your back is okay with that. Very simple movement and just holding into the knees and just circling taking them round to the side, forwards, side, coming in, two or three times in each direction, just nice and slowly, feeling into the hips and the back. And then just taking the feet forward. And one way to get up and to make sure that your back is in alignment is to move your pelvis forwards and up create a little bit of space between the mat and your lower back, put the hands underneath there, push down into the hands and you come up to sitting without twisting your back in any way. The next posture I'm going to show you is called Marjorie Arson. Again, you don't need to remember that name. This is the posture of the cat stretch. So just like a cat, we come into the all force position the same space between the knees as there is between the hands. So, on all fours here, the wrists underneath the shoulders, the knees underneath the hips, and the face is quite literally just facing the floor. So that the back of the neck is nice and long. So my awareness is going to go here to the tailbone, that's where the posture starts. And I would do this as I was breathing in, but I'm going to be talking, so I'll just keep breathing as I need to, to speak. So the tailbone is 
out, stick the tailbone out behind, hollow the lower back, let the stretch work through the back, stretch through the chest, and the head very naturally wants to come up right at the end of the movement. The head remains lifted, and as you start to exhale, tuck the tailbone down and under, and then the back starts to stretch up just like a cat stretching, and right at the end of the movement, the head wants to come down. So I'll show that again, breathing in, tailbone out behind, like the navel is coming closer to the floor, I'm hollowing the back, I'm stretching through my chest, and I'm raising my head. And my arms and legs are like the pillars of the temple, they don't move at all, it's just the back. So I'm breathing out, tailbone down and under, stretch up in the back, and the head comes down. And you can do that as many times as you're comfortable with it. One of the most therapeutic movements you can do for the back. So I'm going to show you now um, some practices that helped me once, many years ago, when um, I moved into a new house and the garden was full of potholes. My foot went down a pothole and I fell. And I thought, oh, I'm a yoga teacher, I've hurt my back. But these positions very quickly got back the strength and the mobility into my back. And I've shown them to lots of people. These are very useful positions to come into to help to prevent you from ever getting a prolapse disc, a slip disc. And if you ever had, had that problem, then these are the exercises that you should do every single day. And if you have regular back pain, every single day, these exercises. So it starts with the legs extending behind in a straight line. And you bring your elbows underneath your shoulders. The arms are parallel and the heels come together if possible. But if you have back pain, you might need to just let the heels relax or even move your legs a little bit away from each other. And you just breathe to your belly and keep the head raised and just stay in this position and attempt to relax your back as much as possible. When you're working with your back, sometimes you just have to work into the edge of your pain and just experience it momentarily before letting go. But this is maybe as far as you can go initially and when the back starts to release and everything starts to ease, what you can then try to do is to push down into the floor through your hands and lift your elbows off the floor like this. And again, if you find that the pain is unacceptable initially and if you've had back pain for a long time, it's going to take quite a long time to get rid of it. If the pain is to one side, you can gently move your hips a little bit towards the side where the pain is and eventually the pain will start to centralize and you'll know that the exercises are working for you. So from here, elbows on the floor. This is affectionately known as the Sphinx because that's what it looks like, the Sphinx in Egypt. And this one is a version of Bhujangasana, which is the serpent posture, snake posture. And eventually, once your back feels okay, then the forehead comes to the floor, the hands come underneath your shoulders, and the movement starts with the head and neck. The hands are a little bit farther back now, and you lift up like this. But I strongly recommend that if you want to work with that posture, you learn it from a yoga teacher in a yoga class, because it's so easy to get it wrong. People will sometimes use the hands to push up like this, shoulders come up behind their ears and people who have bad backs will often stick their elbows out behind and come up like this both of those are incorrect so that final posture is best learned in a yoga class but at home you can just simply lift your elbows off the floor and come up and I can't recommend these movements enough but what you have to remember is to do them regularly. And when you have done them, what you do is you come back to this position and lie down, knees bent. 
and relax your lower back. Keep the back of the neck nice and long. And initially, if that straightening of the arms is too much for your back, you can adapt it by standing up, supporting in your lower back with your hands like this, and just leaning back a little bit from standing up. It's not as effective, but sometimes you just have to go along with that until the pain starts to ease. And if you've had back pain for years and years, yoga is not a magic wand, it's not going to go overnight. You need to do that every single day. And even when the back pain's gone, which it will eventually, every single day, that will prevent it from coming back again. So, it's better to go to a class, explain to the teacher what's wrong with your back, how long you've had the back pain, Listen to the advice you're given. Don't just do the exercises in the class. Go home, do them at home. That's the way you'll be successful. And be aware that there are some classes out there that do very strong, very fast yoga. That might not be for you if you've got back issues. Find a teacher that suits you who will start you off with some gentle, simple movements and you progress at your own rate. But please, Take care when you're doing those postures. If your back pain increases when you're doing them, maybe they're not for you. Maybe you need to get some advice from a healthcare professional. And particularly if when you do those movements, you get pain coming down the leg and particularly below the knee, don't do them. Get some advice because they're not the right exercises for you. But so many people have got chronic backache and those exercises will really, really help. But again, a word of advice, if you get sudden, unexpected and very strong back pain that you've never had before, get some advice. Because again, those exercises may not help you. But they'll certainly help you if you're a poor person who every day suffers from an aching back. I can promise you that. <laughs>